Hi, I'm Bob Moon, senior pastor here at First Methodist Church, and I am so glad you've joined us today. We have a terrific service of worship. We're so glad to have Friendship International here, bringing a group from Romania. They're going to be singing a bunch of songs, and trust me, it will surprise you what they sing, and you will love it. And then we've got an important word about what it means to be a fan or a follower of Jesus. Sometimes we're pretty unclear about what it is. Well, we're going to help us all to understand together what it means to be a true follower, a no turning back kind of follower of Jesus. So join us for this time of worship. We're going to rejoice in the Lord and the joy of the Lord will be our strength. Today to welcome the Friendship International Singers uh, with us. They are from Romania, and you are going to be blessed by their wonderful music. Who knew they were from South Romania? Uh, obviously, they love Southern gospel music and sharing it with us, and we are blessed. Uh, already, we got a chance to hear them at the early service, and you are going to, to love this time today with them with us. So we welcome them in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we want to say to you, that today is Sanctity of Human Life Sunday. We want to remember that every child in the womb is God's child. And we want to let 
the world know that there's an alternative to abortion. Every child is precious. And I want to speak a good word for Options Now, a great organization right here in our community that helps young women who find themselves, or any age woman, find themselves in a, a uh, pregnancy and needs help because we want to help every child to live. We want also to give this message from our church, and that is for those who have been through an abortion, that God is filled with grace and mercy and hope for new beginnings. Uh, after we have a prayer, we're going to show a just a short video. Uh, it's the testimony of a young woman who had two abortions and talks about the grace that she was uh, the recipient of unexpectedly. She didn't realize that God's grace was enough, but He always has enough for us all. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're glad to be here in this place to worship. So come and send your Holy Spirit upon us. Thank you for the wonderful music from our guests. Let our hearts be filled with joy as we join together to sing the praises of the one who counts every child, every person of infinite worth. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus Christ reigns. We sing this hymn, 157, Jesus shall reign. He did, he does, and he will always. Join me in singing stanzas 1, 3, and 5. Please stand as we sing. the Lord in prayer. Let's take a moment of silence just to personally connect with God, and then I'll lead us in a pastoral prayer, and then we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. So let's pray. Eternal God, you who have made us, you who know us well, we come to worship you today. For you alone are worthy of worship. Your works are wonderful, your thoughts precious. But so often we come to you as our errand boy. We come with our lists of what you can do for us. Help us today to listen to your voice within us, to listen to that still small voice, to listen and to obey. We confess we have not sought you with our whole hearts. Instead, we've relegated you to one of the many things to which we need to pay attention. One among the many. Jobs, kids, TV, spouse, groceries, friends, treasures which give us status, sports, school. Oh, forgive us. It's not that the many are not important but that you are supreme in and through everything else. 
Remind us once again of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which we are saved from meaninglessness and frustration, selfishness and hell. Rekindle in us the joy we experience when we ex accept your invitation to join in the greater things of your reign. Grant us grace to live your kingdom here. Lord, you bid us come. You bid us see, to taste and see the Lord is good. Help us to do just that. And having tasted and seen, to go be lights in this dark world, warmth in this cold place. We pray today for all who are particularly in need through death, sickness, loss of home, loss of integrity. We pray for our government leaders and their safety. We pray for our neighbors here in Valdosta, the folks we may or may not know, whose hope for the future is not buoyed by the experience of blessing in the past, who have not known healing or faith or prosperity, and who have no hope. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught Peter and Andrew, Philip, Nathaniel, and us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, it's wonderful to be here with you this morning. We want to thank Pastor Bob for inviting us to come. And Lester, we've been here several times in the past. I don't know if you were here, but it's been probably four or five years ago. And uh, this is the first time, though, that we've brought our Romanians to sing for you Southern Gospel. And you're in Southern Gospel country, aren't you? Well, believe it or not, Romania is in Southern Gospel country as well. They've even had Gaither homecomings in Romania. Isn't that right, guys? These two boys, they sing, actually, in a male quartet. Uh, and do you sing in Romanian or do you sing in English? Both. You sing in both. Okay, well, but this morning I'm singing with you, so we're going to sing in English, okay? Okay. I think you'll enjoy this song. This is an old, a old favorite. Uh, if you know it, just join in and sing along with us. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul.
Del. My name is Del Huff. I'm in the executive director of Friendship International, and as you can tell, I enjoy singing as well. And there's a lot of music in our ministry. We use that as a platform for evangelizing in all the countries we serve in, whether it's Hungary, Romania, and Eastern Europe, or down in Chile, South America, in the UK, or here in America. Good morning and welcome. I know you haven't had time to greet everyone you'd like to, but let's continue in our worship as we sing Marching to Zion. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. 733 in the hymnal stanzas one and four. Please join me in singing. and we'll invite the ushers to come on forward. As we do, let me just say a, a word about our offering today. First, I want to mention to you at the end of the service, right now we're going to be receiving our regular offering for the ministries of our church and its outreaches. At the end of the service, uh, the ushers will have a, some plates at both of our exits, and whatever you put there will go to the Ministry of Friendship International. Now, I want to just make you aware of that, and there's a second thing. We in our area have a lot of farm workers. January and February are really tough for them. There's just no work out there, and so they are in need of just plain old food. So I want to invite you, some of you saw this on uh, an email that we sent out earlier, I'd like to invite you today to take some farm workers to lunch with you. Now, probably you're not actually going to be able to take them, but if you go out to lunch or uh, at a restaurant or just go eat at your home, stop by the grocery store and buy a whopping bag of rice. Go to Sam's. Get Maseka. You don't even know what it, need to know what it is to buy it. Um, get oil like canned tuna. Go figure. And uh, bring that back to the church. We're going to have somebody come and pick it up at noon tomorrow. So if you're able to get it here by noon tomorrow, uh, we'll take it on. If you get it here later, we'll make sure it gets to where it's going. So wanted to let you know about that. One last thing. You know, we sometimes think, well, now what's all this giving stuff about, especially people who are new into the ministry of the church? Well, I got the most wonderful letter from a friend in our church. You know, uh, if you've been here at church, you know that at the year's end, we, that God sent to us a check from somebody who had died, and we got the, uh, the part that they'd left to our church at just the right time. So, here's the, uh, this wonderful letter, and I'm just kind of excerpting this, and I'm sharing it uh, with permission, but I'm not using any names says, uh, Dear Reverend Moon, I read about the uh, gift that came in and rejoice. 
And then enclosed with this was a check for $50. And I want you to hear this. This is one of the reasons we give. This $50 is a seed sown back into First Methodist because of the way and names people here in our church, some of whom are here today, uh, planted a gift into our family. A mobile home was given to us by members and named some of the folks and said they uh, fixed it up uh, wonderfully. I pray that one day, now listen, this is just incredible. I pray that one day we too can plant the gift of an entire house to someone else. Now, I've got to be honest with you, that never even occurred to me to ever do something like this. And yet these friends who have received this seed planted are now looking for that harvest to grow even more. And then it concludes with this. Uh, as you said in your email, this testimony of God's goodness through people is too great not to share. That's why I took this opportunity to tell you our story and God's goodness through the people at First Methodist. I pray God will take this seed money to fertile ground and sow it. Many, many blessings in Jesus Christ our Lord. We, when we give, are just sowing seed and God will multiply it in an incredible harvest. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for opportunities to sow seed. A farmer would be a fool if he said, I'm not going to put seed in the ground. I'm going to keep it so I'll have it all for myself. No, it's when he plants it in the ground, when he gives it away to the ground, that's when it grows up into a harvest that's multiplied a hundred times over. Well, we want to give to sow that seed right here into the ministries of our church, into the ministry of Friendship International, and into the loving care of our dear friends, the farm workers, through sharing our food. In Jesus' name, amen.
much going on in our world today, good and bad. There are people all around us, and yet many they confess they are feel so lonely and troubled in the problem of this world. This next song is a testimony of a person who experienced a wonderful quiet moment and peace in the early morning with his Lord, who gives the assurance of God's presence each day. Take comfort in this next song, I Come to the Garden. the garden alone wild and dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God Closes, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy. The sound of his voice is so sweet. The birds hush their singing, and the melody that he gave to. He tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever Thank you so much for that powerful word right from the Lord. Uh, I meant to mention earlier, if you would like to help support their ministry, you can simply make a check, if you've got a checkbook with you, to Friendship International, and that will go uh, to help them in their work. Well, when you were a kid, did you ever play Follow the Leader? Which was always fun as long as the person was doing what you wanted to do, or if it wasn't too hard but let them do something else, and suddenly you decided maybe that wasn't all that great an idea. You know, we are inveterate followers. Uh, I, I hear stuff like this. Well, you know, that color is in this year. I'm thinking, so who said that? 
But some yokel over in France, France, says, this is the color. And suddenly we all just follow him. I, I never have figured out, you know, what the fashion that people wear or, you know, the kind of hat or this one I just don't get. Uh, gr- walking along, hanging on to your britches with your, un- you know, your underwear showing, not keeping your pants from falling. Who thought that was a good idea? But we just will follow along and do some of the, the zaniest kinds of things. Um, I mean, I, I'm one to talk. I grew up in the, in the 60s. Uh, and in the 60s now, we were not followers. We were rebels. We were nonconformists. And we all nonconformed just the same way as all the other nonconformists. You know, we were, we were the hippies. We grew up with tie-dye and love bees. I mean, the people in that time were so drugged out that it finally resulted in, I hesitate to say this in a church, but leisure suits. (laughs) I mean, it just went from bad to worse. Who ever thought that that was a great idea? We have stuff that just comes and goes, and we follow the latest fad. Well, I want today to begin a series that is really about not just following something and drifting off. That's really being a fan. But it's a series called Fan or Follower. Give credit where credit is due. This book by Kyle Eidelman called Not a Fan is where I got the titles for the messages and a lot of the ideas. Uh, And I would not recommend this book if you want to keep on living an ordinary, unruffled Christian life. On the other hand, if you want to encounter the living Christ, and if you want to seek hard after Him, I would recommend this book to you as an excellent one to help you on your journey. Following. You know, these days on Twitter, who has the most followers? I googled it. You ready for this? The top, among the top ten people on Twitter, Katy Perry, Justin Bieber, Lady Gaga, Barack Obama, Taylor Swift, Britney Spears, and Justin Timberlake. Outside of the President of the United States, the only people who made the top ten list were entertainers, people who were pretty much putting on a persona that isn't really them. They're just faking their life. They're stumbling through life, and these are the people that we're following. Is it any wonder we're in so much trouble? Now, on a more serious note, Everything depends on who you are following. Uh, Take a look at this picture here and see if anybody recognizes this person. Anybody recognize him? Jim Jones. He took about a thousand people down to Guyana, said that he was the Messiah, and they all wound up drinking poison Kool-Aid and died. Don't tell me it doesn't matter who you're following. Or how about this guy? You'll probably recognize him. I'm telling you, he changed our world and not in a good way. People followed Adolf Hitler, and it caused devastation and destruction wherever he went. And the bitterness and the hatred and the anguish continues on even now. Let me tell you, I want to affirm, as they were singing earlier, that there is only one, ultimately, who is worth following because His way is the way of life, and it's our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Kyle Eidelman, whom I mentioned here, said that he was uh, preparing for Easter Sunday, and he said he realized that there would be a ton of people there. You know, there's some folks who only come on Christmas and Easter, and he used a term I'd never heard before. He called them creasters. <laughs> Just show up on Christmas and Easter, Christers. And so he said, God, what is, the, what is the word that you have for me? He said, I, I just, I'm trying to pay attention. I'm trying to listen to what God has to say, but I, I'm not really hearing anything. And so he was in the sanctuary praying, and then the thought came to him, I wonder what Jesus did when he got a big crowd together. So he picked up his Bible and went to John chapter 6. Jesus got a big crowd, you remember, when he fed the 5,000? There were a lot of folks there, and they were, they were, you know, having a a big time eating all the food, and and they hung around hoping for seconds. 
And then Jesus started in on a whole different tack, and Kyle says he noticed that when Jesus got a big crowd together, he started speaking challenging words to them, words about following him even when it was very costly, no turning back kind of following. And he said he discovered when Jesus got a crowd together, he began to preach about what it meant to be a disciple, and the crowds began to leave. Matter of fact, Jesus said, you all are just following me because you had bread to eat. But then he said, I need to tell you something more important. I am the bread of life. Unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no part of me. And they start saying, what? And, of course, what Jesus meant was that just like we eat food and it, it gives us strength, we need to feed on Jesus so that his life is in us and we live out that life wherever we go. Things got so bad, so many people started leaving, that Jesus looked at his disciples, the twelve, and he asked them, are you going to leave too? And I love Peter's answer. You know, Peter didn't always get it right, but boy, he sure got it right that day. He said, Lord, to whom should we go? You have the words of life. Man, I just love that. That's not a fan. That's what the others were. They were a fan of Jesus' fast food restaurant. When he was feeding 5,000, they said, bring it on. But when Jesus started talking about really following, no matter what the cost was, the people began to back away. And Peter says, Lord, where would we go? You have the words of life. And here's what Kyle says. He realized that he had been cheapening Jesus. Now, he did it out of a good intent. He said he wanted people to come back. He wanted people to follow Jesus, but he was kind of giving them Jesus light. You know, kind of like the church that said, we're the light church. Only an 8% tithe and seven commandments, your choice. Jesus is not like that. When Jesus calls people, he calls them to give themselves completely no turning back. My daughter Sarah uh, was 29, and she was not married. Betty and I were concerned about this, and so we decided we would do something. Now, it cost us a good bit of money. We lived in Macon at the time, and we... Um, we bought some billboards around town. And we said, Sarah Moon is available, and we put her number there. And we said, uh, we've had high standards, but we're lowering them. We just need her to get married. And Betty and I had T-shirts made and had that information on it. And, and we said, and if you will marry her, we will throw in a set of Ginsu knives as well. No, we didn't. You know we didn't do that. My precious Betty and I love our sweet Sarah. And we would never dream of cheapening her by selling her off in a way like that. And we figured, well, she just has such high standards, she'll never marry anybody. And then Danny showed up one day and they fell in love, and we were talking with Danny's folks later on when we got to know them, and they said, we thought the same thing about Danny. He'll never find anybody who's good enough for him. And then he came across there. Listen, they didn't lower their standards. They didn't cheapen themselves. And I want to tell you, we dare not cheapen Jesus. Yes, Jesus loves everybody. That is absolutely true. Yes, there's grace enough for us all, but Jesus also gives the call. Every time that he wanted to get a disciple, he would always call them with two words. What were they? Follow me. He'd see them fishing there, and he'd say, guys, follow me. And there's that tax collector Matthew over there, and he goes over, and what's he say to him? Follow me. Jesus is looking for people who will leave it all behind and follow him. 
Let's take a look and listen to Jesus' own words about this. In Matthew 7, verses 21 through 23, here's what he had to say. Jesus, this is Jesus now. He says, not all people who sound religious are really godly. I mean, they may refer to me as Lord, but they still won't enter the kingdom of heaven. The decisive issue is whether they obey my Father in heaven. On Judgment Day, many will tell me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name, but I will reply, I never knew you. Go away. The things you did were unauthorized. See, there's so many of us who gather around and say, hey, we're doing all this stuff for Jesus. I went to church. I went to church on ML King weekend. Shouldn't that count for something? I threw a few dollars in the plate. I went to Sunday school. I did this. I did this. And what Jesus is saying is, I never knew you. It's not about things we've done for him. Do you know him? Are we fans? Oh, yeah, I, I like that church, and we go there, and it's nice, but we're not really following Him. There's not that no turning back commitment. Or how about in Matthew uh, chapter 16, where Jesus picks up and says this, uh, in, uh, starting in verse 24, Jesus said to His disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must Put aside your selfish ambition, shoulder your cross, and follow me. If you try to keep your life for yourself, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find true life. And how do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul in the process? Is anything worth more than your soul? Jesus says it's not enough to be a fan. It's about being a follower. It's about, not, it's about counting the cost and saying, I'm not turning back. Do you remember this story? Jesus um, was approached by a young man. We usually call him the rich young ruler. And this guy, you would have loved him. You would have loved him as your neighbor. He is a guy who would have been, you know, one of the, the, how the business has top 40, under 40. This guy was sharp. He was successful. He was, came from a great family. He was first rate. And he came and said to Jesus, I'm ready to follow you. Now, Jesus could see into his heart. And Jesus knew that the guy really did want to follow him, sort of, but he had an escape plan. He still had his stuff. So if things didn't work out for, with Jesus, he could always go back to his stuff. Jesus recognized that. And Jesus said, you know, you're not quite ready to follow. Go back. Sell all your stuff. Give the money to the poor. No escape. No other alternative. And then come and follow me. Now hold with me. What happens next in the story? He leaves. And it says that Jesus, well, let me tell you, the guy got about 10 yards away. And then Jesus said, wait, I was just kidding. Look, you, you could have a lot of money you could give to my ministry. How about let's make it 75%? And the guy kept going, to wait. Okay, let's go 50-50. Is that in the Bible? No. Jesus saw him walk away, and Jesus let him walk away because he was not going to sell the gospel cheap. It's about following Jesus or not following Jesus. It's not about following him halfway. A fan follows halfway. A follower follows no matter what the cost, no turning back. So how is it that we follow let me just give you three things quickly, and we're going to be through. Number one, we follow closely. We follow closely. 
That means we're not concerned about what others we're stay, are saying. We're staying close to Jesus. We're not going to worry about the things that are around us. Our eyes are focused on Jesus. Remember the guy who came into church one day, was new to the church, and came down, and this was a pretty staid church, and they started having great music like we've had today, and this guy started putting up his hand and waving, and people kind of gave him the stink eye over there. And then after a while, the preacher started preaching and actually had a good point. And the guy said, Amen! And about that time, the usher came over and said, we don't do that in our church. And the guy said, but I've got religion. He said, that may be, but you didn't get it here. <laughs> you know, we are so concerned about keeping everything proper. in our. But when we follow Jesus, you never know where he's going to take us. You never know. But we are to call, uh, we are to follow him with no turning back. It's not about doing stuff. It's about knowing Jesus. It's about following closely, and it's about following daily. Where did we get this crazy idea? I'm going to talk more about this next week. Where did we get this crazy idea that, well, you know, I said a prayer 30 years ago, and I haven't thought about Jesus since, but I got my ticket punched, and I'm going to heaven. That is ridiculous. You know, I, I married my precious Betty 36 years ago. It was up in Tifton at First Methodist. You know, I haven't seen her in 36 years. I wonder how she's doing. But we're married. That's crazy. Listen, it's about a daily life that we share together, the things we do together, the life we build together. And yet there are some of us who say, well, you know, I, I, one time they sang 37 verses of Just As I Am, and I went to the altar. It had been, you know, 25 years ago, but I got my ticket punched. It isn't about that. It's not about being a fan, not about saying I did something one time. It's about being a daily follower. And I want to close with this. It's about following together. There is no part of your body, your physical body, there is no part of your body that can survive apart from the rest of your body. You may have an outstanding heart. Pull that thing out, you will die, and the heart will die. Cut off your finger or your arm. It will die. The parts of our body cannot survive apart from the whole of the body, and neither can we. I'm going to give an invitation here in just a moment to come and join the church. Now, joining the church is not going to get you into heaven. I don't want for anybody to think, okay, gosh, he said be a follower, so I'm going to join the church. Listen, that is just a sign of a commitment that goes way beyond that, a commitment that says, I am signing on, remember last week, not to be a part of a cruise ship, but to be a part of what? A rescue ship. We are taking up the calling that Christ has given to us, no turning back. When we're in it together, have you ever seen the, the uh, Canadian geese flying over, how they fly in that V formation? Did you know that there are people who do research on stuff like that? These people need a life. But they have discovered that when they fly in the V formation, I don't know how you figure this out, that the whole flock adds at least 71% greater flying range than if each bird flew separately. Secondly, whenever a goose falls out of formation, it suddenly feels the drag from being alone, and it comes right back in to the formation. Number three, when the lead goose gets tired, he rotates back in the wing, and another goose goes up front. Number four, the geese in back honk to keep the guy in front going fast. They want to encourage him. And finally, when a goose gets sick or is wounded, and has to land, two geese break out of the formation and go down with them, either until the goose is able to fly again or until it dies. And then either the two or the three will go back up and join another group passing by until they can get back to their own. If geese have enough sense to know they can't make it alone, shouldn't we? We are in this thing together. And so I'm going to extend an invitation. Last week we had some folks join our church. Today there's some folks who said, we want to join the church. I want to add this one thing. 
we believe that everybody in our congregation, every faithful follower of Jesus, ought to be doing at least these three things. Number one, we ought to be in worship. We're here. By the way, did you know, some of you aren't aware of this, did you know they have churches in other cities too? When you're traveling, you can go to church there. They will welcome you. Everybody ought to be in worship. Be there every week. Number two, everybody ought to be in a small group. Some of you are sitting here saying, you know, I've been coming here for ages. I'm not in a Bible study, or I'm not in the choir, or I'm not in a Sunday school class. Or, listen, you could, we've got more great Sunday school classes than you can shake a stick at. You can go down our hallway, and you can see classes that meet on different days. During the day. Everybody ought to be in a small group of some kind. And number three, everybody ought to be in a ministry. So I want to just ask you, where are you? Are you ready to take that step and say, I don't want to just be called a fan. I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ. We're going to be talking about that as we go forward. But uh, let's have a prayer together, and then I'm going to extend an invitation for those who'd like to join our church to come and meet me at the altar. Heavenly Father, it's awfully easy for us to talk the talk, much more difficult for us to walk the walk. But today, we're asking for your help and your strength and for courage to become no turning back kind of followers of Jesus Christ. For we pray in His name. Amen. Now, I'm going to invite those who'd like to join us. Come meet me here at the altar, and then you all are going to sing for us. We're not going to sing our closing hymn. Uh, our group is going to sing for us on our way out. But first of all, I want to extend that invitation. Come on, Doris. Come on, Elizabeth. Listen, these folks have been sneaking up on us for a long time. And they are some of, are you coming too, Pat? Yeah. Well, here's Pat Estes coming with them. They are talking with Pat, and she said, I'm not sure I'm ready. But you know what? You were on the end of the row, so you had to pretty much come on up here. Listen, I just love these three gals, the golden girls. I mean, you know, they are just the best. They are filled with God's grace. They've been such a faithful part of our church. Let me just ask you uh, some simple questions that we all answered when we came to be a part of the church. First of all, do you affirm your baptism? Yeah. Secondly, do you affirm Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and pledge your allegiance to His kingdom? Yes. And... Will you be faithful to support this church in five important ways? By your prayers, by your presence, by your giving, your service, and your witness. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord. I am so... Turn around let them just see you just a second. Now listen, the, the beauty quotient in our church has just gone up. <laughs> this is Elizabeth Cookson and Doris Kinsey. Pat Estes, they all are at Langdale Place, and they are just a part of the heart of our church family. We love them, and uh, can you get a picture, Laura? Okay, she's, she's got them. So you all stick around up here, and I want to invite you to come on up and speak to them. They're good for hugs, all right? So come on up and welcome them as a part of our church family, and as you uh, do that, God will bless you. Let's go ahead and have you all sing, and then I'm going to uh, have the benediction. You all can sit down the front row there uh, while they're singing. So come on up, and you all bless us with one more song. Fan or follower? Boy, everything hangs on that. There are a lot of people who followed Jesus just for a little while, and then they turned away. That's not a follower. That's a fan. But then there were those who said, I'm going to follow, no turning back. Let me ask you, are you ready to be one of those no turning back followers? If you are, would you just pray a prayer right now and ask the Lord to help you? Because it's a daily, close, intimate, passionate walk. You and I don't want to come to the end of our lives and say, Lord, Lord, we did all this stuff, only to hear him say, I never knew you. Take some time with God now. Talk to Jesus. He has his arms open for you.
Yes, ye soldiers of the cross. Please hide his banner. It must not fall for long. Onward to victory. Sound the battle cry. Let the church arise. I'm going to give the uh, group a chance to get to the exit so you all can greet them and speak to them. Remember, come up and speak to our trinity of lovely ladies who have come to be a part of our church family. Would you join hands with those who are around you? Remember, you can make uh, checks payable to Friendship International if you'd like to help out with their ministry. And again, don't forget as you go to lunch, take a farm family lunch with you. Stop by the grocery store and, and get a big bag of something. And bring it back here, and uh, we will bless them with your generosity. So, brothers and sisters, go in God's grace, and may the grace of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be and abide with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.